Hi, my name's Natalie Pocock and I'll be reading Beneath a Steel Sky from the 2020 National Flash Fiction Day Anthology. Hands plunged deep in the lukewarm soapy water, Carrie mechanically pushed the dishcloth backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards across the plate, the grease long gone. Through the hazy window, she caught the faint impression of the boys whizzing round the garden, hiding behind trees, aiming at each other through the bushes. I got you then. I definitely shot you, Abe. You're dead, Bobby exclaimed, plastic gun held triumphantly aloft. Carrie followed the direction of the gun skywards to see that overhead silvery clouds inched across the sky, appearing to gather over their garden. She wondered just how much of the world was covered by the same metallic grey foil. Vietnam! A crackling voice beckoned her into the lounge. She stood in the doorway, giving the TV set a sidelong glance, suspicious of its news, resentful of its intrusion. Casualties. The US. Soldiers. More words invaded the house, the last bastion of normality. Then, the pictures. Oh, good Lord, the pictures. The harrowing images of injured soldiers dripping gore from blown off limbs. Of blood-soaked horrors that couldn't be unseen. A face she thought she recognised. Carrie stood mesmerised. She thought about the times Robert had told the boys off for being glued to the television. Hardly funny now. Her body tried to move, but her eyes remained fixed. Suds slid from her hands and spattered on the floor in a pool. I killed Abe and he won't stay dead, came a wailing sound as Bobby burst through the kitchen door. But he didn't, Mum. He doesn't play fair, said the smallest boy, jabbing his gun at his brother in arms. Behind her, the television continued to chatter and flash images as she retreated back to the kitchen, their latest battlefront. Frowning at Abe, Carrie snatched the gun from his chubby hands and stamped on the pedal of the bin. Its hungry mouth opened invitingly and she flung the gun into its belly, watching as the offending article was greedily consumed. The boys, dismayed at the loss of their game, turned their attention to the television and flicked over the channel. United. All evidence of the war was gone. Carrie dutifully returned to the sink, staring out of the window at the sky. The light silver foil had now crumpled in on itself and had gathered into jagged clumps, and behind it an uncompromising, darkening expanse blanketed the sky as far as the eye could see. To her, the whole world stood beneath a steel sky wrapped in the same grey shroud, how far the taint had spread.